housing affordability crisis, among other factors, has pushed the number of people living on the streets to dire levels. But far from accepting the situation, one inspirational Brisbane woman decided to help in a very practical way. Homelessness is a problem many of us see but feel can't be fixed. But young mum, Jean Madden, was determined to make a difference. Jean was volunteering to do community work when she came up with the idea to develop street swags. The street swag is made out of a high density foam mattress in a super lightweight 8 ounce waterproofed canvas. The sheet or blanket comes over the top of you so that you are safe from the elements, let's say. It then rolls down into itself to become a backpack or over the shoulder bag. And importantly, it doesn't look like bedding. Yeah, that's the way. That's there you the go. Way. That's the best thing. See? Real compact and you can hide it. For the guys to be able to have these that keep them safe, dry, warm, and to be able to keep them with them is, is a brilliant concept. It's just, it's, it's just the best idea I've come across. You've only got to look around here and see the guys. They, well, everybody wants one. You know, last time we met, you actually made me a cup of coffee. <laughs> but it was very lovely of you, so I'm very I was grateful. watching a documentary on homelessness which really highlighted the detrimental effects that Sleeping Rough has on the body physically and mentally. It's such a fast downhill spiral and so taxing on the organs. And you can imagine yourself how hard it is not being able to get a good night's sleep. So I spoke to my husband about it and we decided we would do something about it. So it was the Monday morning that I woke up and just had this overwhelming sense of determination that I was going to do this. And my husband and I said, even if we have to sell the car, this is what we're going to do. Jean designed a prototype, but lacking the sewing skills, she needed some help from her mum. Each night I would jump into bed and have a feeling, an overwhelming sense that I had to thank God for my cosy warm bed. And then Jean rang me and said, Mum, I want to make swags for the homeless. And I said, yeah, sure, that's fine. Because I knew um, that, you know, God was preparing me for it. And luckily, Jean and her mum also have a little help these days. We were approached by um, a gentleman from um, um, Woodford Correctional uh, Centre uh, who wanted to put the project to the board. Um, and asked them if the prisoners could start making the swag. So Jean and I went out there. Um, from then on, they started making them. Meeting Jean and the volunteers is an inspiration, and it shows what can happen when a community pulls together. Yeah, a couple of afternoons a week here at school, at Nudgee, we uh, roll up about 20, 25 swags, and we put a blanket inside and hand them out to the people around Australia. People who I meet who are using the street swag are just so incredibly grateful. Grateful that someone cares, grateful that, you know, this iconic swaggy they can relate to. And it gives them a sense of confidence, purpose, dignity, all these things that are so important that so many of us take for granted. Yeah, just a great story all around that one. Now, if you want to find out more about Jean's Street Swag ID, you can log on to her website, streetswags.org, and we'll be back after this. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, I'll catch you again. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. Uh, since then... Um, I think I've had two kids since then. <laughs> but we've also been busy, very busy in other ways. Um, we now have three prisons that sew for us. We also run two Work for the Dole programs up in the Territory where they sew the swags for their own community who are sleeping rough. And we've bedded, as you heard, 20,000 people across Australia. Oh, yeah, give me another clap. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Um, I guess what I wanted to share with you um, is what I thought might be helpful for you is um, my insights and learning um, as being, I guess, a pioneer in Australia for social entrepreneurship. And there's not many of us. So um, I'm, I'm really sorry that you can't ask questions. Uh, I've told, not allowed, but... Um, uh, perhaps I'll still be around after, and um, if anyone wants to speak to me, they can. I um, had just finished a Master's in Theology 
I specialised in eco-feminist theology, which was... <laughs> doesn't everyone? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> everyone needs a Master's of Theology in eco-feminist theology. Um, <laughs> took me a whole Master's to work out what that was, but basically... <laughs> um, it's the same mindset that oppresses both women and the earth and, um, the, and the earth and, and women are, are so well associated with each other that they're inextricably linked. And um, when I was teaching some of this stuff, uh, because um, I have been a teacher, um, up until recently, I had kids quoting Dan Brown in assignments, and, and whilst it is a fictional story, it is based on some good uh, research, and I guess um, a lot of that has to do with ecofeminism. <laughs> Just so if I've given you some kind of scaffolding there. Um, oh, that's the teacher in me, isn't it? For me, the earth is like a ball of plasticine. If we keep pinching it up. Every time we pinch it up, somewhere it goes down. And if we keep doing this, pretty soon that ball of plasticine isn't going to run smoothly. If we keep pulling it out of kilter, it's not going to roll as it should. So for me, it's about smoothing, taking care of that damage that is closest to you. Is someone going to give me a clap there? I liked that. <laughs> uh, so what we do is about looking after your own family, your own community, because no one is going to look after your family and your community except you. I believe you're all here today because you feel passionately about doing that. And so I've called my speech, All You Need Is Courage, because that's all I had. <laughs> and determination, absolute determination. For me, we just wanted to get those people in Brisbane a swag who needed one for Christmas. So I just decided to do it. And um, I guess one of my biggest learnings, or, or my biggest learning, has been not what ASIC need annually <laughs> and all of those kind of things. But it has been that when you're doing good work for the right reasons, whatever is that higher good for you, whether you call it karma, God, that primordial energy, the secret, if you're an Oprah fan, whatever you want to call it, when you're doing I call it God, so let me call it God, okay? But you can call it anything you want to call it because it's real and it exists. Positive energy, whatever you want to call it, I call it God. But probably my understanding is extremely different to yours <laughs> and depends on your age probably as well. When you're doing God's work, it's God's work. You're just the helper. And like any good boss, God takes care of it. I learned that. At first, and, and of course I'm Catholic, so that's how I'm couching it in that um, culture that has been my upbringing. Mum used to say, oh, what a coincidence, what a coincidence. Just the right people would turn up at the right time. And after a while, she started calling them god -sidences. And after a while, we just got totally used to it. And it continues to happen. We don't have any government funding. What we do is we look after the people who get turned away from emergency accommodation every night. I was at a conference late last year and a, fel a fellow from the Australian Bureau of Statistics stood up and was telling us his latest data because, you know, he's so excited about his latest data. Interesting thing is, I've never, ever seen it anywhere again. But what he said at the conference was that over that past year, so last year, all the SAP-funded accommodation, which is all the emergency accommodation in Australia, Last year, they bedded 105,000 people. Great. I know from working in the industry, industry, terrible thing to say, isn't it? But it is, that you can be on a waiting list for three years, 10 years. 
To get that emergency accommodation, you need to be top of the pops emergency, family with young children. And when you do finally get it, on average, it's between three days to two weeks that stay will be. So bear that in mind. He then went on to say that on any one night, they can accommodate or they only can accommodate 19% of that figure. So that means there's only about, or less than, 20,000 beds for homeless people in Australia. So we know that plenty of those people who go looking for it don't get it. Of those that went looking for it, there was 105,000 who got it. Can you start to work out how many people actually get turned away from emergency accommodation each night? And that was last year. That was pre-floods and cyclones. This year, the majority of our street swags have gone to flood and cyclone victims in Queensland who lost their homes during the floods and cyclones. Because of that, they missed rental payments. They're now on that special blacklist and will never get back on that rental cycle again. Just the other day, just Tuesday, I was with uh, one of our directors who had just been out to a caravan park, and I won't say the suburb, it's about 10 minutes from here. You can work it out if you really want to. There were eight, there are eight families sleeping in a drain waiting to get into that caravan park. They're now sleeping in street swags. My point is that this is extremely real, but extremely hidden. These families can't get Centrelink because they don't have an address. They will never get registered anywhere as being homeless because there is a very real understanding that they will have their children taken off them and put into foster care. These are good families, mothers with their children, who are trying desperately just to get enough bus money to get their kids to school each day, hoping that they can save up enough to go into a real estate agency and say, look, I've got all this money, can you please let me rent somewhere? The amount of homeless women and families that I see, that's the majority of people that this goes to because there's no funding for these people. There's no other way of keeping these people alive at the moment. These young mothers who are pregnant and so excited about having their babies, they won't be able to take their babies home with them. The hospitals don't allow it. Whilst I don't want to see any children living on the street, I completely agree with that. These are good mothers. They haven't done anything wrong other than their company was having cutbacks. So my message is, all you need is courage. And I think there comes a point where, and I was teaching studies of religion at the time, where you talk the talk, and quite frankly, I got a bit bored with it, so I went out and walked the walk. There has to be a time when you go out and you do what it is that you're here about, what it is that you pride yourself on, how you build your identity, there comes a point where if you don't go and do it, you are a hypocrite. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And what you need in that is courage. And if you say you don't have it or you can't do it, it's a cop-out. There's one thing that I want you to do for me, though, to help street swags. On your way out, please take a poster and put it up somewhere for me for our biggest fundraiser ever. 
That's on in four weeks' time at the, Upper Brook, at the Brookfield Showgrounds. Because we don't have any government funding, particularly after the floods and cyclones, we have to totally keep being creative on how we raise our funds. So we are just launching an album this month. It's a Christmas album uh, with some brilliant artists, Katie Noonan, Troy Cassadaly, Tommy Emmanuel, Lee Kernigan, Casey Chambers, a whole raft of A-listers. And this concert in four weeks is the launch event for that. There's about half of the artists off the album will be at this concert. If you can put that up for me, that would be much appreciated. One of the artists, Rob Black, actually recorded a song for us, written for us, which encapsulates our message of taking care of your own community. I'd like you all to pull out your iPhones, those of you who aren't already texting on it, and actually go to iTunes and download that song for $1.40. Might be $1.60, I don't know. I already had it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and my iPhone, my, my smartphone is, is um, so smart it actually left me. Um, <laughs> But that's okay, because I won um, a, a Telstra Nokia award earlier in the week, so um, I asked them for a phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I am just about out of time. Thank you so much for listening today. All you need is courage. <laughs>